So if you're a leader, what are the five things you need to know, the five questions you have to ask to lead in times of disruption? So let's start with the first one. You have to know what business you're in. Everybody who's ever had a successful business that's really run for a long time was really clear about what business we're in. Let me give you a classic example, Blockbuster. Blockbuster had six CEOs in its history. They also had a number of different boards. Three of the CEOs understood that they were in the business of providing people with a family night at home to watch a movie. That's what it was. That night on the couch, that experience on the couch, that's the business they were in. They had another three CEOs who came in and said, oh, no, 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 no. We're in the business of building entertainment superstores. We're going to pack those places with movie paraphernalia, all the stuff you want to buy to watch movies if you're a movie nut. Every time they did that, the company failed. And the third time they did it, they went out of business. Understanding what business you're in really makes a difference. You've got to be really clear on it. Number two, you've got to think short and long. There's a temple in Kyoto, and outside the gates of this temple, there's a little tea house. It's been in business constantly since the year 1001. What would it take for your company to last a thousand years? It's going to take thinking short and long, having a real long view of what really matters most. You know what business you're in. How do you sustain that for as long as possible? At the same time to do that, you've got to be thinking short. You've got to be thinking about where's the food for today? Where's our shipments? What's going on? What's our staffing? Who do we have to be as leaders to keep our people who are working there really understanding what business we're in and how to serve these people coming to the temple? They understood that they were radically important to the life of the temple, of the pilgrims coming to visit it, all of that. If they weren't there to provide them refreshments after their visit, that's not good. Number three, lead from the middle. Every year, Gallup puts out a report on employee satisfaction across the world. And every year, the numbers are about the same. 20 to 30% of employees in most cases are engaged. The rest of them are completely disengaged. And about 15% at the bottom are trying to throw a monkey wrench in the works to shut your company down. That's how much they hate you. And one factor is in the middle of all of that. One predictor. That is the immediate supervisor. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to leaders and said, let's start there. Don't have me come in and talk to the C-suite. I mean, fine, I'm happy to come and work with you. That's important. But the first thing we've got to do is get down to the middle, lead from the middle. I had a talk with a former judge advocate general of the army, uh, General Pede, and he said, look, the judge advocate's office is the biggest law firm in the world. And it's successful because it's designed to lead from the middle out. So have your organization designed to lead from the middle. Number four, understand your watershed. A couple of years ago, well, more than a couple of years ago, uh, Coca-Cola had a problem in India. In the state of Kerala, it was a terrible drought. Uh, the people looked around and saw this big Coca-Cola bottling plant uh, that had a well boiling all this water out of the water. And they said, look, you're, you're just destroying our watershed. And then Coca-Cola tried to explain, said, no, 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 no. The farmer's wells go down a couple of hundred feet. Ours go down a couple of thousand. We're in a completely different watershed. It's not, we're not causing the problem. But if you're a farmer whose crops and animals are dying, you don't want to hear explanations. And Coke, to their credit, really realized that. So they went in to solve the overall problem for the state and for the people. And they created what they called the Watershed Initiative. Now that is worldwide, understanding their watershed and what they can do to help people. What's your watershed? If you're in an organization that needs constantly to hire people and young people coming in, your watershed is the education system wherever you're set up. You need to be able to know that there's a good supply of people coming in who will be educated, able to do the work you need them to do and want to do it and be excited to be working for it. That's your watershed. And then finally, how can you own your societal responsibility? 
We talk a lot about corporate social responsibility, which to be honest, in most cases is nothing more than writing a check to charity. And there's nothing wrong with that. But what if the core of your business, the core of what you did in leadership and the core of your leadership culture was to serve society? I don't care if you're selling pizzas, shining shoes, or building electric cars. I don't care. What is it that you're doing to help society be better so that your people can live a better life in a more stable environment? And boy, is that important today. We are surrounded by dysfunctional leaders, and when you have dysfunctional leadership, you end up with a dysfunctional world. So go out there. Lead in disruption. We need you. Thanks. Thank <music> you.